and good evening. We're very happy to welcome each of you back to the revelation of Jesus Christ. And in this series, we're covering the prophecies that was given to John from the fourth chapter of Revelation, at basically through the twelfth chapter. Tonight, we're looking at chapters 8 and 9 and part of 11. That's what we'll be looking at tonight. And so we're very happy that you're here. We'd like to especially welcome those that are watching by television, no matter where you're at. We're glad that you've joined us. Those that are listening by radio or on the Internet, thank you for tuning in. And we hope that as we talk tonight about the seven trumpets, the seven trumpets, that it will help you understand the book of Revelation. Out of all the prophecies in the book of Revelation, without question, the seven trumpets are the most difficult. And so it requires that you follow as best you can as we take a look at it tonight. Uh, we'll be looking at chapters 8 and 9 and about half or verses 15 through 18 of the 11th chapter on the trumpets. Our next presentation will be time of the end, and we'll be looking at Revelation, the 10th chapter. Now, this is much like you just found out in regard to the seals. You remember, as we studied the seals, we found out that that 7th chapter was kind of an interlude into the seals. We have the same thing here. The 10th chapter and part of the 11th is an interlude into the trumpets. And so you need to look at that in the Scripture because the seventh trumpet doesn't fall until in the eleventh chapter. So the tenth chapter is put in, and that's what we'll be looking at as we talk about the time of the end. Very, very important subject as we continue on talking about the prophecies of Revelation. And then, of course, tonight, seven trumpets. What do you want to look for? What you want to look for in the seven trumpets is God's judgments and how they are poured out upon the earth. That's what you want to find out as we talk about it. So we hope you'll be blessed as we study the seven trumpets. Uh, we're continuing to thank God for having Pam and Jimmy Rhodes with us. And Pam's going to sing a song entitled Redeemed. A great, great hymn, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. That's what she'll be sing singing. But before she does, Chuck Algar is going to come, and he's going to read to you the 8th, ninth chapters of Revelation and verses 15 through 18 of the 11th chapter. Again, tonight, if you have your Bibles... If you can take them and turn them to Revelation chapter 8. We're going to start there and read Revelation chapter 8, 9, and I believe it was chapter 11, 15 through 19, I believe. Let's turn our Bibles to that right now. We'll read together. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about a half an hour. I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayer of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God and from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire, from the altar and threw it to the earth. And there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. So the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, and hail and fire followed, mingled with blood, and they were thrown to the earth. And a third of the trees were burnt up, and all the green grass was burnt up. Then the second angel sounded, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. 
and a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. Then a third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the waters and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died from the water because it was made bitter. Then the fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened. A third of them did not shine, and likewise the night. And I looked, and I heard an angel flying in the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, because of the remaining blast of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. Then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke locusts came upon the earth. To them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth, or any green thing, or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. And they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die, and death will flee from them. The shape of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns of something like gold, and their faces were like the faces of men. They had hair like woman's hair, and their teeth were like lion's teeth. And they had breastplates like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots, with many horses running into battle. They had tails like scorpions, and there were stings in their tails. Their power was to hurt men five months. And they had as a king over them an angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in the Greek he has the name of Polyon. One woe is past. Behold, two more woes are coming after these things. Then the six angels sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the six angels who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour, and day, and month, and year, were released to kill a third of mankind. Now the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million. I heard the number. And thus I saw the horses in vision. Those who sat on them had breastplates of fiery red, hyacinth blue, and sulfur yellow. And the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and brimstone. By these three plagues, a third of mankind was killed by the fire and the smoke and the brimstone which came out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouths and in their tails. For their tails are like serpents having heads, and with them they do harm. But the rest of mankind who were not killed by the plagues did not repent of the works of their hands, that they should not worship demons and idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. And they did not repent of their murders or their sorceries or their sexual immorality or their thefts. Revelation chapter 11, 15 through 19. Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. 
And the twenty-four elders who sat before God on their thrones fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty, the one who is and who was and who is to come, because you have taken your great power and reigned. The nations were angry, and your wrath has come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that you should reward your servants, the prophets and the saints, and those who fear your name, small and great, and should destroy those who destroy the earth. Then the temple of God was opened in heaven, and the ark of his covenant was seen in his temple. And there were lightnings, noises, thunderings, an earthquake, and great hail. May the Lord add his blessing to his word. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through his infinite mercy. His child and forever I am. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the In Jesus, no rapture my language can tell. I know that the light of his presence with me will continually dwell. Our gracious Lord, tonight we come to you asking that 
in your mercy and in your love, you will look down upon us. Give us, Lord, your spirit tonight. May it give us enlightenment. May we see the things that you have recorded in your word for us to know in the time in which we're living in. Bless us in a special way in our study this evening. We ask in Christ's name, amen. We finished the seventh chapter of Revelation, where we talked about the sealing of God's people. And we talked about how the sealing was a settling in to the truth of God's Word. Tonight, as we look at the seven trumpets, we are looking at God's dealing with those that did not receive the seal of God, have not taken the seal of God, have not received it. This is what he's talking to. So let's take a look and see. I saw seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. The golden altar that's talking about there, folks, this is it. This is the one they're talking about. It was the altar of incense. This was the golden altar, and that is what he is there offering the prayers of the saints. These are those who have been sealed. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascend before God from the hands of the angel. So here they're praying. God ha the angel has brought the prayers of God's people before the Lord. Concerning what is going on, the conditions of things that's happening in the earth. And the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it to the earth. And there were noises, thunderings, lightning, and great earthquake. This marks that they have approached the end of time. He has taken the censer, thrown it to the earth, marking that time has come to an end. Trumpets, you'll find as you go through God's Word studying it, trumpets are blown as a warning. This is why they blew the trumpets. They had um, people in the camp that would blow the trumpet as a warning. And when he sees the sword coming upon the land, if he blows the trumpet and warns the people, then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning if the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be on his own head. In other words, the trumpet was sounded as a warning, and people were to take uh, what, cognizance of that and, and follow the warning that had been given. Trumpet blowing will announce the coming of the day of the Lord. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm in my holy mountain, let all the inhabitants of the earth tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, for it is at hand. So this is what the trumpets were to do. They were sounded as a warning to the people. These seven trumpets are an answer to the prayers of the souls under the altar. Because they are those, if you remember, had been slain for the word of God, and they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? So these judgments are in answer to their prayers. That's what they are. So the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. Now, as I mentioned, of all the prophecies in the book of Revelation— Probably the seven trumpets are the most difficult to understand. Basically, there are three concepts of prophecy. And you find there's one that goes way over here that's called a predestor view, and it takes all the prophecies and sticks them in the past and says they've all been fulfilled, they have no meaning to you whatsoever. There's another view way over here, 
That is called the futurist view. And the futurist view simply says this, folks. It says all the prophecies in the book of Revelation for the, from the fourth chapter of Revelation to the end are in the future after the righteous have been taken from the earth and they have no effect on you whatsoever. That's the futurist view. There's another view that's in between. That's called the historical view. And the historical view says that many of the prophecies in Scripture have been fulfilled and some are still to be fulfilled. I'd like to tell you that is where I stand. Okay, are we clear that? That is where I stand. These prophecies of the judgment, as far as I'm concerned, some of them have not been fulfilled. And that, because they are in the future, does not make a person a futurist. If it did, then people who believe in the second coming of Christ or in the millennium would be classified as futurist. Okay, but that's where I stand, and I felt necessary that you understand where I am on this subject. I am historic in my belief, and that's where I stand. Okay, let's see if we can take a look at this. What do we know for sure about the trumpets? What do we know that we can say, yes, this we know? The trumpets are intended to bring people to repentance. And as you read through them, as we read through them tonight, you'll find that it refers to that over and over. These are people that have not at yet accepted the message of God's Word, and He's trying to bring them to repentance by the judgments. It says they did, they repented not. They take place before probation closes. They take place before probation closes, because men are still given the opportunity to repent. At the same time, they are divine warnings that the time of repentance is running out. That it's running, time's running out on it. The seven trumpets cover chapters 8, 9, 10, and 11. Those are the chapters that it covers. The first four trumpets are judgment trumpets. And the first two of the last three are demonic woes. Okay? So let's take a look at them. The first angel sounded, hail and fire followed, mingled with blood, and they were thrown to the earth. This is the trumpet taking place. And a third of the trees were burned up, and all green grass was burned up. Now, as you pick up your Bible, and particularly, folks, as we begin to study and as we continue through the book of Revelation, you're going to find that God speaks over and over about a particular city. And that city is called Babylon. And he talks about his judgment against Babylon. And this has to do with Babylon. Babylon is Satan's kingdom and the trumpets are God's judgment against it. He speaks very clear, and as we continue on in our study, uh, we're going to find out exactly what's all involved in Babylon and, and, and all. But this is Satan's kingdom, and the trumpets are judgments against it. Therefore, therefore her plagues will come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she will be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judges her. So you find here that this is judgment against this city of Babylon, and as he says, the grass and all will be burned up. Now the great city was divided into what? Three parts. And the city of the nations fell. Great Babylon was re remembered before God, to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Babylon, we just read, was divided into what? Three parts. How much of the grass and trees was burned up? A third. So, let's see, it's talking about that, particularly what is happening there to Babylon of old. Then the second angel sounded. Something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. 
and a third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. I'm going to show you something. I want to make it clear in showing this. I don't particularly believe this is the second trumpet, okay? I just want to show it to you to show how quickly a trumpet like that could be fulfilled, okay? Because he said he saw something like a, like what? Like a mountain. Ever seen anything like a mountain? And it was burning with fire and thrown into the sea. And because of that, the sea became blood. Those are actual pictures of the oil spill. And a third of the fish in the sea died. Now, folks, we haven't started to see the results of the oil spill. I mean, we've only seen the tip of the iceberg. It only takes one quart of motor oil to make 250,000 gallons of ocean water toxic to wildlife. It only takes one, one quart. If the oil isn't contained, it could poison all the oceans of the world. Not to mention that the oceans are critical to maintaining the proper oxygen level in the atmosphere for human life. Uh, all I'm trying to get across to you is we may read those prophecies and say, well, how could that ever happen? Very, very easy. Now, could happen without question. But this is talking, as I said, about Babylon. Behold, I'm against you, O destroying what? Mountain. He's talking specifically about Babylon. Babylon. And when those prophecies were made about Babylon, they apply to spiritual Babylon. That's what they apply to. Who destroys all the earth, says the Lord, and I will stretch out my hand against you. Babylon, as you remember, sat there, and through the city of Babylon flowed the river Euphrates. And it's very important that you understand that as we look at these trumpets. Then a mighty angel took up a stone like a millstone and threw it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence the great city Babylon shall be thrown down and shall not be found anymore. So this is talking about spiritual Babylon and what is going to happen to it to be destroyed. Then the third angel sounded. A great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. It fell on how much? See, Babylon's divided into three parts, so you find just exactly it's talking about. So it fell. And the name of the star is Wormwood. And a third of the waters became worm, wormwood, and many men died from the water because it was made bitter. The trumpets not only have a spiritual application, but a physical application to the inhabitants of the earth. Okay, it says he saw a star fall from heaven. In the Bible, stars are what? They're angels. And that's the way it refers to them as angels. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend unto the heavens. This is Lucifer. I will exalt my throne above the what? The stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest side of the north. This is referring to him. His tail, speaking of Lucifer in Revelation, the 12th chapter, his tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. So you have here these stars that Lucifer brought with him, or the angels. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. So when it talks about this star that fell, it's very applicable to the devil himself. A third of the waters became wormwood. Many men died from the water because it was made bitter. And we, as it says in the 11th chapter, we'll talk about tonight, he will destroy those that destroy the earth, and we're doing a great job at destroying it. 
Then the fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened, and a third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. A third of the sun struck darkness on the earth. You remember one of the plagues in Egypt was darkness? Remember that? Also, you remember that it says here that one of the seven last plagues is darkness on the seat of the beast. And so it says the darkness would fall upon them. And then the fifth angel, this is the plague. This is Revelation 16, verse 10. This is one of the plagues. And the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness. So a very strong parallel between the plagues, seven last plagues, or that plague, and the judgments here, or the sounding of the trumpets. And I looked, and I heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the remaining blast for the trumpets of the three angels who are about to sound. Now, you remember when we studied the uh, seven seals, we found out that four of them were what? You remember? Four of those were men riding on horses. But the last three weren't. They were different, and they applied to mankind. Those first four applied to mankind in general. But then you get the last three, and they become more specific. Same thing happens here. These four trumpets apply to mankind, but now all of a sudden you find it begins to turn and become much, much more specific as to what is going to happen and take place. So we come to the fifth one, which is the first of the woes. Then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit. I should go back and reread that. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star what? It doesn't say fall. It says fallen from heaven to the earth. In other words, it has already taken place, okay? Fallen to the earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke rose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke locusts came upon the earth, and to them was given power as scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass or the trees or any green thing or the, any tree, but only those men who die have the seal of God on their foreheads. So you can see clearly here, this is judgment against those who do not have the seal of God on their forehead. Okay? And they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. And in those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die, and death will flee from them. The shape of the locust was like horses prepared for battle. On their heads were crowns of something like gold. Their faces were like the faces of men. They had hair like women's hair, and they had teeth like lion's teeth. And they had a breastplate like breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots with many horses running into battle. They had tails like scorpions, and there was sting in their tails. They had power to hurt men for five months. And they had a king over them, the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew was Abaddon, and in Greek he had the name Apollon. One woe is past. Behold, still two more woes are coming after this. Well, let's see if we can put some things together about this fifth trumpet that has been blown. Star. This is the same star as mentioned in the third trumpet. The one that, like a star, 
fallen from heaven. Here it says it has fallen from heaven already. So this star that it's talking about here has a definite application to the devil, to Lucifer. He's a fallen angel, has fallen from heaven, and this is what it's referring to when it talks about him falling from heaven. The pit or the abyss, the place where the beast comes from in Revelation 11. If you read Revelation 11, it talks about this beast that came out of the bottomless pit where Satan has spent the millennium. If you read Revelation 20, it says that's where the devil will spend the millennium. So when it talks about a pit or the abyss, this is the place where the devil is assigned to. It says that it was prepared for the devil and his angels. And so this is what that's talking to out. Locusts. You have these locusts coming in in the Old Testament. They're used as another symbol of judgment. And you find very clearly it talks about locusts coming on Babylon. And it talks about what it would do to them there in Jeremiah 51, 14. It talks about locusts as a judgment against Egypt in Exodus 10, 4 to 15. And so locusts are used as a means of God's judgment. These locusts are different, as you notice, from what we just read. The locusts in the fifth ch chapter, or the fifth trumpet, must be understood as symbolic, symbols of demonic forces. We do not have any locusts coming in. Folks, there's not going to be any locusts that you're going to see that are going to have faces like uh, lions and women's hair and lion's teeth and all that. That's not going to be there. These are symbols, and they're symbols of demonic forces that will take place here in the last days. That's what it's talking about when it talks about this fifth uh, trumpet that is to be sound. These are signs of judgment as to happen to the people. Five months. The only other place in Scripture that five months is mentioned is about the flood. That's the only other place. Five months with the flood represented five months of destruction. And that's the only place that John got that from, the five months would be signs of destruction that would take place by the judgment of the fifth trumpet upon the earth. You have to remember that this is God's effort, God's final effort, to pull the people away from these things of this earth and call them, cause them to repent and come back to God. This is what he's doing. And so he's pleading with the people, working with them, trying to pull them away from this earth and get them to accept him and to follow him. Stings in their tails, the great red dragon tail swept away a third of the angels in heaven. Remember that? It says he pulled. It's his tail that he uses. It stings in his tail. This is what it's talking about, that it's that power. It's, it's by, we'll read this in a minute, but it's by his tail and his mouth. The scripture says that he deceives and pulls people away. Abaddon, or Apollon, the word means destroyer. That's what the word means, which is an appropriate name for Satan, without question. Now, Babylon, the city that is the seat of Satan's kingdom, in which the judgments are being poured out upon Babylon, would receive double portions of God's wrath. Both the trumpets and the plagues will fall upon Babylon. Babylon, both. And it says clearly there in Revelation 18, verse 6, that she will receive double on the city or the spiritual Babylon. This is what takes place. So this fifth uh, trumpet is a trumpet that is being poured out as a judgment down here at the close of time in which he is calling people back. Where do you and I stand These trumpets are being poured out on who? Those who do not receive the seal of God. But it makes it clear that they will not be poured out on those that have received the seal of God. 
Those that have the seal of God will be cared for and will be protected. That's the marvelous thing about it, is that God's seal is placed upon his people, and he says, they're mine, I will care for them, I'll look after them, I'll see that they're cared for. And so this is what he does. And so these trumpets are against those who do not have the seal of God. All right. We come to the sixth one. And then the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before the throne of God. This is the four horns of the golden altar, altar of incense. Heard a voice from there speaking, saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. Euphrates. Now, this angels, release them, turn them loose. What are these angels holding? Yeah, the winds of strife. That's what they're holding. He said, turn them loose. Please notice that takes place in the sixth trumpet. Because when they turn them loose, you know what's going to happen? The seven last plagues are going to fall. See? So the four angels who had been prepared for an hour, day, and month, and year were released to kill a third of mankind. They were released. A third of mankind would be killed. Now the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million. I heard the number of them. So this isn't a few. Now again, we had a description of the locust folks that, as you can say, was very descriptive. Well, the same thing is true of the sixth plague. Very, very descriptive of what is happening when it talks about them here. And thus I saw horses in the vision. Those who sat on them had breastplates of fiery red and cynthian blue and sulfur yellow. And the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions. Okay? And out of their, what now? Out of their mouth came fire, smoke, and brimstone. All right. By these three plagues, a third of mankind was killed. What, what are those three plagues? By fire, by smoke, and by brimstone which came out of their mouths. So I told you, the thing that happens here, it has mouth and tail. Very, very important. For their power is in their mouth. Their power is where? In their mouth and in their tails. For their tails are like serpents, having heads, and with them they do harm. So these... Uh, horses that they are riding on, and these men, they're going to do harm to the earth. But the rest of mankind who were not killed by the plagues did what? Did not repent of their works and their hands that they should not worship demons and idols of gold and silver and brass, stone and wood, which neither see nor can walk. See, he's, he's making an effort, folks, to get them to repent. To change their ways. And they did not repent of their murders or of their sorcery or their sexual immorality or of their thefts. They didn't change. They didn't repent. Okay, let's take a look at the sixth trumpet. See what's involved. The four angels are those in chapter 7. Those are the four angels that are holding back the winds of strife. And those four angels that are there are bound where? At the river Euphrates. And the river Euphrates flows through what? Through Babylon. Okay? So you come to that. Let me just take a moment to show you what I'm trying to get across to you. The river Euphrates flows through Babylon. And it says here that they're bound at the river Euphrates. 
when you go to Revelation and read about the seven last plagues, the sixth plague speaks about the river Euphrates, what? Being dried up. Okay, this is all has meaning in reference to God's Word here, what happens. The hour, day, month, and year is not prophetic time, but the time God set to loose the dynamic demonic forces. In other words, it's not trying to tell you prophetic time. It's trying to say that God had decided on the day, the hour, the month, the year in which he is going to release those four angels. And when he releases those four angels, dear friend, then you're dealing with the time in which probation has closed and it's over. And so that, that's what it's talking about when it talks about the day, the hour, the month, the year. That is where God has decided that it's come to an end, that those are to be released. The figure 200 million is symbolic. Uh, just the same as when you read Scripture and it says there was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. Uh, this is the same thing. It's talking about a complete number, that 200 million. It's an uh, innumerable, innumerable company of them. This was this army. These are Again, folks, I want to clarify, these are demonic forces that are working at the end of time. With fire, smoke, and sulfur is used in Scripture, it is connected with judgment, always. Do you remember the colors? Hmm? What were the three colors? Red, blue, and yellow. Did you notice that? Fire, smoke, and sulfur are those three colors. See, that all fits together. It's the judgment that goes against the people that are unwilling to follow God, unwilling to walk with Him and do His bidding. Power is in their mouths. Okay? The conflict is of a spiritual nature more than a physical. Now, I want to clarify what I mean by that. I don't mean to say that there's not physical conflict here. There is. And without question, as those are poured out upon the earth, there will be great uh, suffering and death from it. But the conflict is more spiritual than it is physical, and that's why it says it's in their mouths and in their tails, because in this conflict, folks, more is involved in the mouth than any other thing. Listen. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. That's, I'm reading 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4, and it says what the what? The weapons. Okay? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not physical but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down what? Arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. This is important because the words have tremendous power. That's what he's talking about. And so by their words they stand and by the devil's deception by things he does by word of mouth is what it's talking about. Uh, Revelation, uh, again, the 16th chapter where it talks about the plagues there. It said, I saw three unclean spirits come out of the, what? Out of the mouth of the beast, the dragon, the false prophet. Those were in other words, that's why they're coming out of the mouth. It's because it's by deception, by the power of the mouth that this takes place. Ephesians 6, 12, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. This is where the conflict is, and that's why it says out of their mouth. 
goes to these things. And uh, have a friend of mine here tonight, Sherry, who's an attorney, and she, I think, could very uh, vouch the fact that it's the words in court that counts that makes a great difference. That's where the power of the argument is, is in that. And so uh, this is what it's trying to tell you and I, that this is where the conflict is. And so the sixth trumpet takes place. When those trumpets are sounded, folks, that sixth one sounded, then after that, it's over. That's God's last appeal to try to get mankind to repent and come to him. Then the seventh angel sounded. There was a loud voice in heaven saying, The kingdom of this world have become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the 24 elders who sat before, the, before God on their thrones fell on their faces and worshiped God, saying, We give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty, the one who is and who was and who is to come, because you have taken our taken your great power and reigned and the nations of the and the nations were angry your wrath has come in the time of the dead that they should be judged and that you should reward your servants the prophets and the saints and those who fear your name small and great and destroy those who destroy the earth then the temple of God was opened in heaven the ark of his covenant was seen in the temple and there was lightning and noises and thundering and earthquake and great hail. Do you know why the temple all of a sudden in heaven is open? Because Christ is left. His mediation in behalf of man, pleading for man, has come to an end. He's walked out. It's over. He's taken off his robes as the priest, as the high priest, as the mediator, and he's put on his robes as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And so these are judgments that take place down at the end of time. So I would tell you, study the book of Revelation. Study what's happening there. And God will direct, help you and I understand what is to happen and take place just before Jesus comes back. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we come to you tonight asking that you would give us, give us the assurance, give to each one that's listening, watching on television, here. May they have the assurance of salvation in Christ. May they be sealed by your blood. May all of us look to you, cling to you, place our lives in your hands and walk with you in all that we do. May we desire above all else to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. We're thankful to know that you're there, that you're our Savior, that you're by our side, and we can depend upon you, for we have salvation in no other name but Jesus Christ. For this we ask in your name. Amen. Well, we move into the next presentation into the 10th chapter. We're still dealing with the time of the trumpets because the trumpets deal with the 10th and 11th chapters, not until the end of the 11th chapter that we come to the end of the trumpets. So this 10th chapter of Revelation is again kind of an interlude that God is putting in there that tells us what is happening to his people, God's people here in the last days. That's what he's helping us know and understand. So it's a, it's a very, very vital uh, chapter. I think it's a great chapter because it deals with the coming of Jesus Christ. It's what it talks about, great coming of our Lord, and we're thankful for that promise and hope that we have in Him as our Lord and Savior. So we hope that you will be blessed as we continue to uh, take a look at it, and then, of course, we'll look at the 11th chapter, and that will bring us to the end 
of the trumpets. So have a good evening. God bless you, and be faithful to the Lord, and we'll see you again in our next presentation. Good night. God bless you. Every day, thousands risk their lives to protect and serve their fellow men. They have a deep commitment to excellency and teamwork, and when others run from danger, they run to it. Even if it means personal sacrifice, even if it means making the supreme sacrifice for another, they're always on call, ready to serve, no matter what. Friends, you and I can learn a lot from firefighters. In the United States, the majority of them are volunteers. That's right, volunteers. But even for those who are paid, it's more than a job, it's a calling. Jesus said in John 15, verses 12 and 13, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. Those who follow the words of Jesus are his friends. But Romans 5, 8 says that God demonstrated his own love towards us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. What an amazing thought. Christ laid down his life for us, even though we were not his friends. A firefighter is willing to do the same. He's constantly preparing for his next mission because his own life and the life of others depends on his training and qualifications. My friends, that's what we're doing right now with this series. We are preparing you for what is to come. Our goal is to make you skilled in the Word so that by the power of God you can bring others to safety, the safety that can be found only in the arms of a loving Savior. Won't you help us to train and prepare others to fulfill this mission? Please consider what you can do for those who still don't know about Jesus. As the Holy Spirit impresses, please send your tax-deductible gifts to Kenneth Cox Ministries, Post Office Box 1027, Loma Linda, California, 92354. Or call us toll free at 888-747-1844. Thank you for helping us spread the light of God's Word through television. Your gifts bring the blessed hope of salvation to millions around the world. The Revelation of Jesus Christ is available on DVD. Each individual program from the second series, Revelations from God's Throne Room, may be received on a single DVD for only $10 plus shipping and handling. The entire seven-part series, including Worthy is the Lamb, Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, The 144,000, The Seven Trumpets, The Time of the End, The Two Witnesses, and War in Heaven may be ordered as a set for $59.95, which includes shipping and handling. To order, call 1-888-747-1844 or write to Kenneth Cox Ministries, P.O. Box 1027, Loma Linda, California, 92354. Or you may order online at kennethcoxministries.org. The Revelation of Jesus Christ on DVD. Each individual message on a single DVD or in a set. It's a great way to share this life-changing message with your family, friends, and neighbors.